today. My name's Eric. As always, I want to thank you for taking a couple minutes and checking out my video today. On this episode of Smoking, I'm going to show you how to make pork and sauerkraut in your slow cooker. Now, you don't need to make this in your slow cooker. You can put it in a roasting pan in your oven, but uh, you know this time of year, we're in winter. I love the slow cooker. It just fills the house with a great aroma. Now, this is a recipe I got off a website I frequent quite a bit called allrecipes.com and it got very high reviews and they're using pork tenderloin instead of a pork shoulder or pork butt uh, so I've never tried this before I guess it's very popular based on the comments of people who have made this recipe I guess it's like a New Year's tradition in Pennsylvania and the pork and sauerkraut served together is supposed to bring you good luck for the coming year but uh, everyone added their little spin to it I got a couple pork tenderloins here, around uh, a little over a pound a piece. I got an onion. I got some of these little Yukon Gold potatoes we're going to throw in. I have a few uh, apples. We're going to add some uh, caraway seeds, a full jar of sauerkraut, salt and pepper. Throw everything in, set it on low all day. It's going to be absolutely delicious. So stick around. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Let's get cooking. Alright, the first thing you want to do is gather all the ingredients. This is going to be the longest part of the whole cook here. You want to slice up an onion. Uh, you want to slice up, I got three apples here, Granny Smith apples that I have uh, peeled and cut into small pieces. Uh, potatoes, I got some caraway seeds here, some sauerkraut, some chicken stock, butter, and the pork tenderloins. Okay, this is super easy. So we're going to start with uh, one cup of chicken stock. Now I've uh, when you go on the All Recipes, you can leave reviews and suggestions. And of course, people said throw in a beer, throw in some wine, whatever you want, okay? Well, the great thing about cooking is you can always experiment. So I have one onion here. I haven't cut, uh, cut it up too fine. Relatively big size chunks because I know it's going to break down and kind of get tender, simmering all day. So we're going to put the onions in the chicken stock. Now I'm going to take these pork tenderloins. I'm just going to lay them on top of the onions. I don't want them laying directly on the bottom because I'm afraid they're going to burn. Okay. Then I'm going to take uh, some butter here. It's actually a, a quarter cup of butter. I'm just going to stick that right in there. <laughs> and then I'm going to take the potatoes here. I'm just going to kind of stuff them around the sides here. And I think I got around two to two and a half pounds of potatoes. And these are the, like I said, the Yukon Gold. These are cool because uh, you can cook them with the with uh, the, the skin on it, just like so. And these are going to get nice and tender as this cooks all day. I'm going to start off with low. You can always start off on high if you're pushed for time. All right. So I got some caraway seeds in here. And as usual, I like to grind them down a little bit, release some of those flavors. I bought this a few weeks ago when I did my Hungarian goulash video. Oh, I love the smell of caraway. And I think caraway mixed with the sauerkraut is perfect. So I got around a tablespoon of caraway seeds in here. You can put more or less or none at all if you don't like it. I think it just adds a delicious flavor. Like I said, I got the apples. We're going to pour that on top. And then last but not least, I got one jar of sauerkraut. This is, uh, let's see, 32 ounces. I'm going to do the liquid and all, okay, because it needs a little bit of liquid. All right, I have this uh, slow cooker packed to capacity. But as it cooks, it'll, uh, it'll shrink down a little bit once it starts warming up. So that's it. I got it on low. I put the cover on it and uh, we're going to let this go all day. So I would say, you know, an hour around four or so, check it out. We might want to take that pork out and stir everything together. Check the tenderness of the potatoes. See what the internal temperature of the pork is. Uh, we want to go at least 145, 150 degrees on the pork, which shouldn't uh, be too hard to achieve in the slow cooker. That's it. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my uh, afternoon. We'll check back on it in a few hours. See you guys in a little bit. All right, it's been four hours. I can see it's starting to simmer along the edges here, but I want to kind of get an idea what's going on with the pork. So what I'm going to do here, it's the first time I've lifted the lid. 
I'll make sure it doesn't steam up the camera lens. I'm going to try to scoop out these potatoes and just put them on a little dish here and then I'm going to try to see if I can pull one of those pork tenderloins out just so I can take a temperature reading and uh, give it a good stir once I get all these potatoes out. Right, I think I got most of the potatoes out at least the best I could tell and I can see the pork is just right under the surface there it's got plenty of liquid but let me see if I can pull one of these pork tenderloins out and we'll get a, give it a quick temperature check oh yeah it's definitely whoo, it's shrunk a lot alright let's just see I'm gonna take both of them out because I want to give this a good stir give the apples and the sauerkraut and the onions are really good stir it's very hot I can definitely tell that uh, the pork is cooked but just to double check I got my little insta read here we're just gonna stick it in the pork here yeah we're at 171 172 let's see this other one 174 175 so this is sufficient uh, to serve right now. The potatoes are still a little bit on the firm side. They seem like they could use a little bit more time. And I did notice the apples too. I did try a little bit of the apple. And uh, although it's uh, definitely softer than raw, it hasn't achieved that kind of nice tender tenderness that I'm looking for. So I think we're just about there. It's been four hours on low. The recipe said 8 to 10, which is total overkill, or maybe I just got a super powerful <laughs> slow cooker. I'm not sure, but uh, I did taste it. It tastes fine. The only thing I'm going to add is just a little bit of ground black pepper to the mixture here. I'm not going to add any salt. The sauerkraut is pretty salty. We'll give this a good stir one more time. The recipe also says if it looks like it needs more liquid, you can add some more water, but it's plenty of liquid if you ask me. Okay, so now what I'm just going to do, I'm going to put some potatoes on the bottom first. And since this pork is pretty much done, I think I'll just, and the potatoes are what I want to kind of continue to cook a little bit. I'm going to keep it on low for another hour or so. And we should be ready. And uh, yeah, it's only 4 o'clock and we're probably not going to eat till around 6. So I'm probably going to end up turning off the slow cooker. and It's got a keep warm setting. So there, I'll just put this on top. It'll still continue to kind of keep it warm and make it tender. But uh, just like so. Look at how quick and easy this is, too. Not very complicated. And like I said, there's a lot of people that did some variations, you know, added carrots, poured in a beer, maybe a little bit of wine. The sauce tastes pretty good. All right. We just pour the rest of this liquid in. Want to get all those onions and sauerkraut in there. All right. There we go. It's looking good. So I'm going to continue to keep it on low. I think we'll go another hour, hour and a half. But it's pretty much done at that temperature. Uh, you know, you're over 170. It's okay. But, you know, maybe we'll bring it up to 200 just to kind of make that pork super tender. So we'll give it another hour and a half or so. See you guys in a little bit. All right, while we're waiting for the food to cook, beer review time, beverage review time, I should say. I'm having a Blue Moon Belgium White uh, wheat ale brewed with uh, orange peel, 5.4% uh, alcohol. I know this is made by uh, or owned by Coors Brewery out of Colorado. And this is my daughter Ava Grace and my son Kyle. Empty. An empty cup. Well, you'll have something to put in it in just a second. Ava Grace is going to fill her cup with Arizona all natural fruit oh, punch. Not, I didn't know it was from Arizona. Well, they call it Arizona. I don't know if it's actually from Arizona. I actually do know my states and my Let's capitals. If you guys know yet, I don't remember if I told you, but but this is from Arizona. I know where that is. That's yeah. next to where we live. And then Kyle's trying something. Sangria, Sanrurial. 
Senior. <laughs> it's a sparkling non-alcoholic sangria, which is basically sangria is a mix of uh, fresh fruit, like oranges and stuff, and apples, I believe, with wine. But this is a non-alcoholic version, so I have no idea if Kyle's going to like this, but we're running out of drink ideas. <laughs> So that's what Kyle's going to have. This will so, shake well, so... Well, give it a good shake. This is made in Mexico, Kyle. I looked it up online because I didn't know what it was. It's the same company that makes... Uh, what are those Mexican sodas we always get? Jarritos. Mm -hmm. All right, Ava Grady, you're ready, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. We gave it a good... Like we gave it a good oh. shake. Yep. Hey, guys. <laughs> give it a good pour, Kyle, and uh, see how you're, it smells. You're having the orange peel beer. Well, it's, it's got a little bit of an orange peel. Be careful. Mm -hmm. I do no love worries. to taste the orange peel. Well, it's just flavor, Kyle. It's not like you're drinking orange peel. I do like drinking that. Do you, do you peel oranges anyway? Yeah, you sometimes take the peel and use it in cooking. Mm-mm. -hmm. All right. I do love me orange And Blue Moon, which has been around for several years. It's kind of a... I think it's popular with people who don't like beer because it doesn't have a strong beer flavor with the orange peel and I think it's what's a coriander. Yeah, coriander that they put in it. Is that an orange moon? Alright. So you can you smell a little bit of orange in there? No? Yep. Not that, this. What does your yeah. smell like, huh? Um, whatever it smells like. I don't know what it smells like. Ooh, just fizzy. Hey, be careful. I don't want you to... <laughs> it smells like a drink. Alright, as always, I appreciate you watching my video. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers to ourselves, and then let's do a good, quick cheers to our viewers. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate oh, it. to the viewers. To the viewers. Alright, let's give it a sample and see what, uh, see what we think. This is easy to drink beer. Definitely more flavorful than your typical Coors or Bud. It's like one notch above. <laughs> it's not that exciting. It's not very hoppy. It's got a fruit, fruity kind of aftertaste. It's 5.4% alcohol, so it's one one notch above uh, your standard 5% beer. And you know what? On a hot day, this isn't too bad. I mean, it's not a high-end beer, but it's better than the traditional stuff, uh, American cheap beer. All right, Ava it, Grace. It tastes like those like Hawaiian drinks, like like Hawaiian if, punch? Like if you guys, if you guys like found out, if you saw me before. In a drink review, trying a Lou Punch from a Hawaiian brewery. Oh, yeah, Luau Punch. Was that Luau Punch? Yeah, that was that yeah. from a Hawaiian company. So it's pretty good? Mm -hmm. All right. And this, Kyle. this is really good. It tastes like a fruit. Well, it's supposed to be. A, look, let me take a sip. It tastes but, like berries and. It's good. I definitely oh, yeah. have this again. That is good. I thought typically, you know, it's made with uh, wine. Mixed with fruit, but I, you know, obviously this is not alcoholic, but it's very fruity, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, There's as always, guys, I appreciate it. We're gonna finish our drinks. I'm gonna have to give you a refill, Ava Grace. You drink them so fast. <laughs> cheers. Okay. Again, it's empty. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Here, give me a cheers, <laughs> your brother. All right, everyone. Okay, I think we're just about ready to serve this. Okay, now I think everything is nice and tender. I'm gonna grab one of these pieces of pork. I've been debating whether to try to shred this or whether to just leave it alone and like slice it. So I'm gonna pull these out right now. We'll take a closer look. Oh yeah, this one's already falling apart. So I think I just answered my own question. All right. I just didn't know if it would shred without that much fat content, but oh yeah, look at this. Okay, all right, well. I answered my own question. I'm gonna shred this up. You can see there's not much fat, but it'll just probably help absorb some of that juice. All right, I'm gonna shred this up and then uh, we'll be back in a second. I'll stir it back into the liquid, let it soak up for a little bit, heat up, and we'll be ready to eat. Wow, look at this. This is looking delicious. All right. There's absolutely no fat, so I've never done this with a pork tenderloin, so I'm actually surprised, but uh, you know what? Well, I got the camera rolling. Let's just try a little piece here. Mm. 
Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh, the flavors of the. I can taste the caraway seeds and a little bit of the tartness from the sauerkraut. Oh, it's good. Hmm. All right. Let me shred this up for a second. We'll be back in a second. Okay, so uh, stir this up. The apples are nice and tender. I tried one. The onions are all nice and soft. The sauce is delicious. So the first thing we're going to do is just obviously pour all that pork back in. It's going to soak up a lot of this juice, which is great. There we go. Yeah, we're gonna stir this in good. Look at this. Oh yeah. And I'm not even gonna put the potatoes in. I'm just gonna leave them here because uh, I don't wanna keep handling them. But wow, look at that. Okay. Still on low. I'm just gonna let it simmer there for around five minutes. We'll get uh, some plates and we'll plate this up and give it a sample. Be back in a okay, second. Okay, so I put up some potatoes out here and we're gonna just scoop some of this pork. Ooh, let it sit and warm up a little bit. Yeah, it's shredded nice. And like I said, I'm not used to shredding pork tenderloin, but uh, actually it's pretty flavorful. And putting it back in there good. like this, it actually smells really good. You can really see the good. liquid really got absorbed. So there's definitely some. Uh, oh, look at that. It's not dried out. No, not at all. Very good. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. And like I said before, if you wanted to add some carrots or some other vegetables to the mixture, you could. But the, the apples have kind of uh, added a nice sweetness, I think, yeah, I to think the so. sourness of the sauerkraut. Because sometimes people think that sauerkraut by itself is a, it's a little too sour. All right, we'll scoop some up in the second plate here. Oh, yeah. Hang on. A little more. Let's get a little bit more pork on there. There we go. Look All right. That. There we are. Look at that. Absolutely delicious. All right. We got to put a little bit of that juice on there for sure. All right. Welcome back. I'm here with my daughter, Ava Grace, who's very excited. <laughs> I, I took know. some pork and some of the apples and onions and sliced them up into very small pieces. And then I took uh, one of the potatoes kind of cut it up into small pieces, mashed it. Just to let you know, guys, I already did finish the drink I tried on the uh, drink of you. <laughs> yes. I already finished the whole thing of that. Dad gave me another, and I finished that. She did. I wanted to show you guys the potatoes. They're not too mushy. They're cooked very well. I mean, I mm, so good. Okay, anyway. Well, mine, Grace, can, mine can be mushy. It's okay, because I'm, I'm still working on chunky stuff. Yeah, you are. Okay. Well, look at the camera. Let's, uh, you want to try the potatoes first or the pork first? The, I guess the, the potatoes. Okay, let's try the potatoes first, okay? Okay. I got potatoes and then I got, like, pork. All right. Like, you know, sauerkraut. Give a good bite and look at the camera tell them what you think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfectly mm -hmm. cooked. Wow. It tastes like I'm having real mashed potatoes. Yeah, like, they're very good, huh? It's like the kind of gravy, you know? Yeah. It tastes like that. So it's All right. good. So, so it's now, really good. As good as it is with mashed potatoes, but a little but a little better. Yeah, <laughs> but a little better. All right. I'm going to try some pork. I got an onion and a little bit of an apple on there. All right. Whoops. What happened, Dad? Nothing. Give no, it a... but you said whoops. Well, because a piece dropped off my fork. All right, let's try the pork and look at the camera and tell them what you think. The, okay, and there's also like sauerkraut and like onions. Sauerkraut and what, apples. What's in that? Sauerkraut, apples, and onion. Mmm. Mm. And caraway seeds. You might be able to taste that flavor. It's caraway seeds. Yes. Mmm. Wow. That is so good. I don't know. Maybe I just like caraway and sauerkraut, but the... That's good too, actually, guys. Yeah, the sourness of the yeah. sauerkraut kind of completely disappears. I don't even taste the sourness of that. Yeah, by putting the apples in there. I think the sweetness of the apple kind of offsets it, so I would definitely recommend putting at least a couple apples in there. Mm. Yeah, I don't even taste the sourness of sauerkraut. And I'm surprised how well it's shredded and how well it tastes being a pork tenderloin versus a pork butt, but I'm sure this recipe would work well 
with a pork shoulder as well. Man, it's just good. What do you think, Ava Grace? Awesome. You're gonna have some in your mac and cheese tonight, huh? Mm-hmm. Mom said we're gonna put a little bit of that pork, huh? In my wheels and cheese. It's like wheel pasta from like Alina's. Wow. With this like with cheese. With As always, cream. guys, I really appreciate you watching the video. This is a great recipe. I definitely recommend uh, trying it out, especially if you got a slow cooker. Or yeah. like I said earlier, you can put it in a roasting pan, you know, 350 in your oven for a little bit, and, uh, you know, take a temperature of the pork when it's ready. Man, is it good. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Ava Grace, for joining me on my taste review. You usually don't get a chance to do that. No, but I did what, on the first time when I tried the, the salmon. Well, I know, but I'm glad you're doing it a second time. Hopefully you'll be able to do a lot more with me, huh? You're getting so good with eating. I'm so happy. So anyway, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. I got the full recipe below if you need to look at the measurements. I really appreciate appreciate you watching my video. Check out my website. Uh, I'll leave the link above and below, ericsmokingbarbecue.com, and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you for all the support. Look at the camera and tell people thanks for watching. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, guys. All right. I hope you guys start watching our channel. Because <laughs> you guys got him. Yeah. Mmm. Man, this is so good. I know, man. It's mm. awesome. Well, I'm glad you, you're able to eat it, Ava Grace. You like, you like the pork better than the potatoes, huh? Mm -hmm. I don't. Wow. I love it. <laughs> really, I love it.